Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 27th, 2018 on the Saturday. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. So for this segment, I am going to provide for you my weekly Arctic sea ice weather and climate update. And we do appear to be seeing some changes in the Arctic at this time as northern hemisphere fall proceeds more and more toward winter and it's worth noting that temperatures in the arctic are, are starting to fall now even though anomaly values are ranging well above normal for this time of year we are seeing temperatures start to drop off even as they remain above well above average and as a result, we're, we're starting to see sea ice start to advance throughout the Arctic Ocean, even though we are still rather close to record low ranges. We are not in record low ranges as we were earlier this week. So a, a bit of, of cautious good news in the short term on that count. And, and looking at the University of Bremen sea ice concentration monitor, we can see uh, sea ice advancing through the through land bridge that is building through the East Siberian Sea and starting to encroach upon sections of the Laptev Sea, which, which has long been an area of wide open water for the summer of 2018 and well into fall. We're also starting to see ice forming in the, uh, near, near the Kara Sea zone and, and just well, on the uh, Siberian side of, of the Kara Sea and, and the Barents. And this, this is uh, another area where we're seeing some, some more rapid growth in sea ice. Sea ice has overtaken much of the Beaufort Sea and is slowly starting to encroach on the Chukchi Sea, but it's worth noting that the Chukchi ocean surface temperatures are still much, much warmer than normal. We have a lot of resistance to sea ice refreeze in that zone at this time. Slow incursion into the Baffin Bay with uh, Hudson Bay, very clear. Looking at Arctic sea ice measurements, uh, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the, the red line, which is 2018. We see that uh, 2018 line now is ranging around third lowest on record for the date at around 7.18 million square kilometers at this time. This moving up from record low ranges earlier this week and, and late last week. So, so we are getting a bit of a bounce in Arctic sea ice at this time, which is propelling us above record low ranges, but we are still in historically very low, low ranges for this time of year, about 2.3 million square kilometers below the 1980s average according to this JAXA sea ice monitor. Looking at temperatures in the Arctic, I'd just like to call your attention to temperatures in the high Arctic above the 80 degree north latitude line. And during early to mid fall, we have seen temperatures ranging much above normal in, in the high Arctic in the range of about, well, as much as about 10 to, to 12 degrees Celsius above normal for this time of year. As you can see in this monitor, temperatures have fallen off even though they remain well above the green baseline. And right now we're seeing temperatures in the high Arctic in the 80 degree north latitude line to the polar range averaging about five to eight degrees Celsius above normal for this time of year. So still much warmer than normal, even though we are seeing temperatures start to really drop off. Looking at climate reanalyzer, I'd just like to point out that overall Arctic temperatures are remaining in the range of about three to four and a half to even five degrees Celsius above normal over recent days with the present GFS model showing a 3.8 degrees Celsius part departure above average. I'd also like to highlight that global temperatures do appear to be ramping up a bit. So, and this is, this is versus uh, 30 year climatology. So if you're seeing global temperatures in the range of 0.8 degrees Celsius above average, that's 
roughly correlates to about 1.2 to 1.3 degrees Celsius or more above average. So the globe as a whole is, is heating up quite a bit with the Arctic remaining as a hot spot, despite the fact that temperatures are dropping off in the Arctic at this time, hot, remaining above the, the seasonal baseline, but kind of following a seasonal trend as we head into winter. So, so thankfully we're not, we're not seeing like a presently a five degrees Celsius above average temperature for the entire Arctic or worse, but, but it, this has been a very warm fall, very uh, much warmer than normal fall for the Arctic. And even in the short term GFS model, we, we do see temperatures ramping up again toward the five degrees Celsius above average range over the coming few days into October 29th and October 30th. But in the latter portion of the model, temperature anomalies appear to drop back off to levels that are roughly about the same as the present time. It's worth pointing out that the above normal temperatures are primarily focused on the Arctic Ocean region, and this trend is expected to continue over the coming 10 days. Looking at sea surface temperature anomalies, we have seen consistently well above average temperatures in both the Chukchi and Bering Sea, and that trend remains for the present day with sea surface temperatures according to the DMI monitor ranging as much as four degrees Celsius or more above average through the Bering Strait region and into the Chukchi Sea. All other oceans surrounding the Arctic are showing above normal temperatures in the range of about one to three degrees Celsius above normal in the Barents, uh, Laptev, and Kara Seas. And in Baffin Bay, temperatures appear to be about average, or maybe ever, ever so slightly above average for this time of year, and similar ranges for Hudson Bay. So we should, over the next few days and weeks, we should start to see rapid refreeze in these zones as ocean temperatures are not as likely to resist refreeze as they are in the Chukchi Sea or in some of these other regions that are showing much warmer than normal ocean temperatures. For the Arctic, we have tended to see a, a lot of energy transfer. I'm going to go ahead and flip to a jet stream map. I'm going to check the time. We've got about two and a half minutes left. Um, I'm going to flip to a jet stream map so that you can look at the uh, ridge, various ridge and trough zones that are transferring heat from on an atmospheric basis into the Arctic. And we still have a very strong ridge in central Siberia, which is continuing to transfer a lot of heat into the Arctic probably in association with this much warmer than normal ocean zone over the Laptev Sea and in the uh, near Siberian region of the Arctic. We're also seeing a very strong high amplitude jet stream wave running in through the extreme North Atlantic and in through the Barents, and, and we're getting a bit of heat transfer in, in that region. One other region where we see a lot of heat transfer is, <clears throat> excuse me, running up through the eastern, northeastern Pacific and through western North America with a, a ridge zone or ridge pattern reinforcing through the western U.S. and, and through western Canada. This ridge is not as, as, as highly developed in the um, upper level atmospheric monitor, but we stu still do see a lot of heat transfer at the surface, probably due to much warmer than normal ocean temperatures in the Bering and Chukchi Sea. Now there's one other feature that I'd like to point out is, and that's the polar vortex. And at this time, the polar vortex looks really healthy. And, and this is um, kind of cautious good news. A strong polar vortex tends to keep cooler air, cooler conditions in the Arctic. However, this polar vortex is occurring at a time when we, we, when we are seeing much warmer than normal temperatures in the Arctic. So, so a, a couple of a, a, a countervailing indicator right now with the polar vortex and something that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, looking at the satellite shot, we see um, we can see the sea ice uh, starting to really reassert in the central Arctic with these large open water zones surrounding. And just flipping really quickly to the visible shot, let's see how much time. Uh, let's see if I can flip to the vis visible shot for you guys. We can still see some fires burning in high latitude zones in association with the ridge zones that we've been seeing. So a lot going on with the Arctic right now. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.